Welcome to Redeemer Lutheran Church. My name is Pastor Griebel, and this video is part 48 of a Bible study based on the book of Genesis. As it says there on the screen, our, our focus today will be on chapter 43. Before we get to that, though, we have our opening hymn, Rejoice My Heart, Be Glad and Sing. my heart be glad and sing a cheerful trust maintain for god the source of everything your portion shall remain he is your treasure he your joy your life and light and lord your counselor when doubts annoy your shield and great reward why spend the day in blank despair in restless thought the night on your creator cast your care he makes your burdens light did not his love and truth and power guard every childhood day and did he not in threatening hour turn dreaded ills away he only will with patience chide his rod falls gently down and all your sins he casts aside in ocean depths to drown his wisdom never plans in vain nor falters nor mistakes all that his counsels may ordain a blessed ending makes upon your lips then lay your hand and trust his guiding love then like a rock your peace shall stand here and in heaven above. And we join together in our opening prayer. O oh God, you once taught the hearts of your faithful people by sending them the light of your Holy Spirit. Grant us in our day by the same Spirit to have a right understanding in all things and evermore to rejoice in his holy consolation through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. All right, let's get right to our study of Genesis chapter 43. Have your Bible handy as we go through this chapter of the Bible. We continue with the story of Joseph and his brothers and their father Jacob during the great famine. Now the famine was severe in the land. And when they had eaten the grain that they had brought from Egypt, their father said to them, Go again, buy us a little food. But Judah said to him, The man solemnly warned us, saying, You shall not see my face unless your brother is with you. If you will send our brother with us, we will go down and buy you food. But if you will not send him, we will not go down. For the man said to us, you shall not see my face unless your brother is with you. Israel said, Why did you treat me so badly as to tell the man that you had another brother? They replied, The man questioned us carefully about ourselves and our kindred, saying, Is your father still alive? Do you have another brother? What we told him was in answer to these questions. Could we in any way know that he would say, Bring your brother down? 
And Judah said to Israel his father, Send the boy with me, and we will arise and go that we may live and not die, both we and you and also our little ones. I will be a pledge of his safety. From my hand you shall require him. If I do not bring him back to you and set him before you, then let me bear the blame forever. If we had not delayed, we would, have not, we, we would now have returned twice. Then their father Israel said to them, If it must be so, then do this. Take some of the choice fruits of the land in your bags and carry a present down to the man, a little balm and a little honey, gum, myrrh, pistachio nuts, and almonds. Take double the money with you. Carry back with you the money that was returned in the mouth of your sacks. Perhaps it was an oversight. Take also your brother and arise and go again to the man. May God Almighty grant you mercy before the man, and may he send back your other brother and Benjamin. And as for me, if I am bereaved of my children, I am bereaved. All right, let's look at some of these passages. Looking again at what we just read, verses 1 through 14, what caused Jacob, also known as Israel, to change his mind about sending Benjamin to Egypt? The famine was so severe. So just as a reminder, Jacob... Israel had sent his sons down to Egypt to buy grain because the famine was so severe. And when they got there, Joseph, their brother, that they had sold into slavery in Egypt, was now the ruler of Egypt and in charge of distributing the grain. And so Joseph's brothers came in and bowed down before him just as Joseph's dreams had said they would. And Joseph recognized them, but they did not recognize Joseph because they thought, well, we sold him as a slave. How could he possibly be the ruler of Egypt? So they were, there was no way they suspected that he was now the ruler of Egypt. And so he tested them. He accused them of being spies. And he said, the only way I will know you are not spies, if I take one of your brothers and keep him as a hostage here in Egypt, you go back home and bring my other brother, Benjamin, and back to me, and then I will know you are not spies. And so when the brothers went back to Jacob, their father, and told him all this, Jacob said, no way. There is no way I'm sending Benjamin down to Egypt with you. I've already lost Joseph, and so I'm not going to send Benjamin. But then he changed his mind because the famine was so severe, they still needed food. So he changed his mind. Why did Joseph's brothers tell him so much about their family? Because Joseph, who recognized them, but hadn't had any news about them for, it was going on 22 years now, he questioned them very carefully, and especially about his father. Because before he had been sold by his brothers as a slave, he had been the favorite of the father, Jacob. So he questioned them very closely. He also noticed that his brother Benjamin was not with them because on the first trip down to Egypt, Jacob had not allowed Benjamin to go along. So that's why Joseph questioned them so carefully and they had no idea that Joseph was testing them. They just answered the questions honestly. Which brother said he would take responsible, responsibility for Benjamin's safety? Judah stepped forward and offered to make sure that nothing happened to Benjamin. How long did the brothers delay going back to Egypt due to Jacob's refusal to send Benjamin? Without the delay, as Judah pointed out, they could have gone and returned twice. How does this verse indicate that despite the famine, there was still food in the land of Canaan? Jacob had the brothers take with them nuts and honey and other gifts to Egypt. So they weren't completely desolate. What was Jacob's theory as to why the brother's money was, was in their sacks? Jacob thought it might have been an oversight. So the brothers had gone down to Egypt, had gotten the grain from Joseph, had paid for it, but then Joseph told his servant to put their money back in their sacks. And so they started on their journey back to Canaan, and then they discovered when they stopped for the night, oh, our money is back in our sacks. And rather than go back to Egypt and return the money again, they kept on their way to Canaan. But now, they're, the, now that they're going back to Egypt a second time, they took 
not only the money that had been returned to them, but also extra money to pay for the additional food they were now going to buy. And so Jacob said, figured, oh, it was just an oversight that your money was still in your sacks. So looking then at verse 12, how does this verse indicate that Jacob and his sons were not destitute? Well, they were able to take twice the amount of money with them. So they took all the money that they had but had been returned to them in their sacks, plus uh, extra money to buy new food. And so they weren't totally destitute, but you know, if things would have continued, it would have gotten very, very bad for everyone. Okay, then looking at verse 14, how would you describe Jacob's attitude regarding sending Benjamin with the brothers? Fatalistic. He says, if I am bereaved of my children, I am bereaved. Now we should also point out that why was Benjamin so much the favorite? Well, Joseph and Benjamin were, those two were the only two true brothers uh, of, and sons of Jacob. They were the two sons of Rachel. Rachel couldn't have children initially, but finally she had Joseph. And then in the process of giving birth to Benjamin, she died and Rachel of Jacob's wives, Rachel was the favorite. He loved her more than the others. And so, since Joseph was now out of Jacob's life, he only he had all he had left in remembrance of Rachel was his son Benjamin, so that's why he was so special and why he wanted to protect Benjamin. All right, let's look at the rest of the chapter. So the men took this present and they took double the money with them and Benjamin. They arose and went down to Egypt and stood before Joseph. When Joseph saw Benjamin with them, he said to the servant, steward of his house, bring the men into the house and slaughter an animal and make ready, for the men are to dine with me at noon. The man did as Joseph told him and brought the men to Joseph's house. And the men were afraid because they were brought to Joseph's house and they said, it is because of the money which was replaced in our sacks the first time that we are brought in, so that he may assault us and fall upon us and make us servants and seize our donkeys. So they went up to the steward of Joseph's house and spoke with him at the door of the house and said, O oh my Lord, we came down the first time to buy food, and when we came to the lodging place, we opened our sacks, and there was each man's money with each man's money in the mouth of his sack, our money in full weight. So we have brought it again with us, and we have brought other money down with us to buy food. We do not know who put our money in our sacks. He replied, Peace to you. Do not be afraid. Your God and the God of your father has put treasure in your sacks for you. I received your money. Then he brought Simeon out to them. And when the man had brought the men into Joseph's house and given them water, and they had washed their feet, and when he had given their donkeys fodder, they prepared the present for Joseph's coming at noon, for they heard that they should eat bread there. When Joseph came home, they brought into the house, they brought into the house to him the present that they had with them, and bowed down to him to the ground. And he inquired about their welfare and said, Is your father well, the old man of whom you spoke? Is he still alive? They said, Your servant, our father, is well. He is still alive. And they bowed their heads and prostrated themselves. And he lifted up his eyes and saw his brother Benjamin, his mother's son, and said, Is this your youngest brother of whom you spoke to me? God be gracious to you, my son. Then Joseph hurried out, for his compassion grew warm for his brother, and he sought a place to weep, and he entered his chamber and wept there. Then he washed his face and came out, and controlling himself, he said, Serve the food. They served him by himself, and them by themselves, and the Egyptians who ate with him by themselves, because the Egyptians could not eat with the Hebrews, for that is an abomination to the Egyptians." And they sat before him, the firstborn according to his birthright, and the youngest according to his youth. And the men looked at one another in amazement. 
Portions were taken to them from Joseph's table, but Benjamin's portion was five times as much as any of theirs, and they drank and were merry with him. All right, let's look at these verses. So looking at verse 18, why did the brothers think Joseph invited them to his house to dine with them? Not as some kind of honor, but because Joseph was going to punish them for not paying for their grain. So to their credit, they went ahead and confessed to the servant. They said, look, we came here and bought grain the first time and now we're back. But when that happened the first time, our money was given back to us. We don't know what happened, but now we're bringing it back to you plus the money for the additional grain. And the servant, well, let's find out what the servant said. How did Joseph's servant, according to verse 23, explain the fact that the brother's money was in their sacks? He said it was their God. The God of their fathers had put the money there. Interesting for this Egyptian servant to give honor to God in this way. Remember, uh, Jacob, their father, had said, oh, it must have been an oversight, just a mistake. But the servant gave credit to God. Whom did the brothers get to see at Joseph's house? Simeon, the brother who had been kept as a hostage, a prisoner by Joseph, to guarantee that they would come back and bring Benjamin with them. So Simeon was finally let free and allowed to join them. What was Joseph most interested in hearing about from his brothers? He wanted to know how his father was doing. So there's all these clues along the way. But these brothers never caught any of them. That Joseph kept asking about their father and about his brother, Benjamin, and so on and so forth. There's many different, you know, they completely did not suspect that it was their brother, Joseph, whom they were talking to. But Joseph had recognized them. What was Joseph's reaction then when he saw Benjamin? He went and hid himself and wept. This was his full brother, his own mother's son, as I explained earlier. The only, they were the only two sons of Rachel. Why do you suppose it was an abomination for the Egyptians to eat with foreigners? So they go and gather for this meal, and Joseph is eating in one place, the brothers in another place, and the Egyptians, because they don't like to eat with anyone else, they were off by themselves. No idea why that was the case. How does this verse, verse 33, looking at verse 33 then, how does this verse show that Joseph remembered each of his brothers clearly? He sat them according to their ages at the meal. And again, this should have been another clue that something was going on here with Joseph, but they, were, they completely did not suspect that he knew who they were or that he was their brother. How much more did Benjamin receive than the other brothers? Five times more. And why do you suppose Joseph gave Benjamin so much more than the others, according to verse 34? Perhaps to see if they were still jealous. So if you remember back, starting in chapter 37, the reason that the brothers sold Joseph as a slave into Egypt was because they were jealous of him. Because Jacob, the father, was clearly favoring Joseph and made him a beautiful colored coat and favored him in so many other ways. And because of that jealousy, they hated Joseph. And when the opportunity came, they sold him as a slave into Egypt. And so now, perhaps Joseph had the same thought here. I'm going to show favor to Benjamin and see if they still get jealous. See if they are still jealous when someone gets better treatment than they do. All right, so that's our look at Genesis chapter 43. We're coming up on some very dramatic chapters in our next segments of this study. We hope you've liked this video and will like it on YouTube and share it with other people. And if you have not already done so, why not become a subscriber to Redeemer's YouTube channel? That way, whenever we post a new video, you can be notified. We'll close then with the benediction. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with us all. Amen.